You're listening to an Englishman in the Balkans. Hello and welcome to the podcast where in this episode I'll be taking a closer look together with my wife Tamara at something that seems to thread its way through everyday life here. Superstitions. Whether you're in a bustling city or a quiet mountain village or even where we live, Bosnian superstitions are part of the rhythm of life, weaving together tradition, belief and a bit of cautionary advice from elders. Now, some of you might be familiar with the infamous Promire. We did an episode uh, of that on our sister podcast, Coffee and Rakia, as Tamara explains. Promire is really dangerous. <laughs> it can kill you in this country. If you're sitting on a, in a, in a, in a Promire, like Promire is when you open two windows so the different sides of the house, there's a draft, like there's a wind. And then if you're sitting in between, you can get like, you know, cold or your neck will hurt or you're going to get like a ear infection and things like that. Do you really believe it? it it's really serious, yeah. Do you really believe it? Yes, and especially my niece. She, she doesn't like Pramaya when we drive the car. She says, close the windows, I'm going to get ear infection, sinus infection. Yeah, it's, I think it's ingrained in, in our culture. You grew up it's with it? It's in our genes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Pramaya, you stay away from Pramaya. Okay. Like, like from a thief or a murderer. In this episode, we'll explore a few more of these fascinating beliefs, some rooted in ancient customs, others a reflection of Bosnia's unique relationship with the natural world. So let's start with a common scenario. You're about to leave the house, but just as you step out of the door, you realize you've forgotten something. Naturally, you turn back inside to grab it. But in Bosnia, that simple act of re-entering your home comes with a twist. If you're going somewhere mm -hmm. and you forgot your phone mm -hmm. and you're halfway there or, or you, you're in a car, you're driving and you, you realize you forgot your phone and you have to come back home. It's usually bad luck. I don't know why, but every time you forget something, just leave it there. Don't come back home. Your mother, though, believes in all these superstitions, doesn't she? No, she doesn't really. But... Because the other, the other night he left his um, phone. Mo mo mobile phone. My dad phone. left the phone. And he was on the way to Banja Luka and he came back. But he he, did, he didn't worry about bad luck, did no, he? No, he didn't. He's a, my, my dad is an engineer, so engineers, they have different minds than other oh, people. They're, they're my mother is more like a social, like, like a social study person. <laughs> so, it's, so that's not really ingrained? No, I now. don't think so. But uh, another big one, you know, Promaya is the one of the biggest one, but another big one, if you break a mirror, you don't have a luck for seven years. Oh, we have that in, in, in England as well. I think that's so across the world. That, that's a big thing, for example, and I don't believe in that. How many mirrors have you broken in your life? I don't know. <laughs> but you don't, you don't have an un Oh, there's another one, just before I forget. If you lose your wedding ring, that means the marriage is over as well. So never lose your wedding ring. It's an interesting habit, a small ritual of sorts that reminds us to be mindful before setting off. And in a country like Bosnia, where journeys often wind through mountains and unpredictable weather, perhaps there's some wisdom in that. You can contact us at an Englishman in the Balkans at gmail.com. But superstitions here aren't just about travel, they often tie into social etiquette and how we interact with others. One example, and it's something I've never thought about, involves the simple act of passing someone an object. Let's say you're handing over a pair of scissors or a sharp knife. This one I read about, and I don't know, I've never, in all the years we've been together, which is many now, decades in fact, <laughs> um, handing over knives or scissors from hand to hand is not to be done in this area. You're supposed to put it on the table and then somebody picks it up because otherwise it breaks the relationship or the friendship. You're shaking your head, so that, that, that's... I've never heard of that one here, no. Or, or in my family where I grew up, in my area. Zaidi, Zaidi. Yasno. Then 
Thanks for listening to our podcast. If you would like to support us and the production of future episodes, then please consider maybe buying us a coffee. The link to do that is in the show notes for this podcast. The first time we left your parents' flat and we were going away on a journey, I was shocked when your mother threw a mug of water behind us. She always used to do that, you know, when I used to have exams. She used to do that. She says, don't turn back, I'm throwing the water, that's for good luck. So she threw a water in the hallway of the building. And that's for the good luck. So you, you say break your leg. In English you say break a leg. Break your leg, but here we throw water. Just a little bit of water, you know, after. And you grew, and also and you grew you up with that. You mentioned when you leave your house. When you leave your house and you go and you sleep somewhere for the first time, you should look at all four corners and make a wish. <laughs> That's another one, a weird one, isn't it? It is, it is a weird one. Yeah. Um, and then that wish should come true. An Englishman in the Balkans podcast with David Bailey. At the start of every year, there's your Christmas. Yes. And you bake this wonderful bread called Chesnitsa. Yes. You make a big thing out of putting your pinafore on your, your, your thing that you... Apron. Your apron. And then in the pockets, you rush around the house to find as much money as possible. All the money that you have in the house. You, stuff, you stuff into yes. it while you're making your chestnuts. Yes. Why? I don't know. It's just from my great-grandmother. She used to do that. Because if you put the money, all the money you have in the house while you're making chestnuts in the pockets or in the apron, yeah, this whole year is going to be successful then for you. You're going to have make a lot of money and you're going to have success. That's why. And you top it off by hiding a coin in the bread. Yes. But if you get a coin in the bread, also that year is your year. It's going to be good. I haven't had a year then for 24 years. <laughs> I've never won it. I've never got it once, have I? I thought you got one last time. No, 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 no. Who did last time? Uh, Victoria got it. Again. Again. Sometimes I think it's a plant. Another fascinating superstition surrounds the concept of the evil eye, or Uruk. This one's shared across many cultures, but in Bosnia it's particularly vivid. The belief is that certain envious glances or words can bring bad luck or even illness, especially to young children. To protect against this, you'll often see babies and young children wearing small blue beads or other charms called hamalia to ward off the evil eye. In our bedroom, we have a large blue piece of glass, I think it is, multicolored blue piece of glass hanging on a very un ornamental rope. Yeah, but that's not, I don't think that's from this country. And the evil eye, ah, they, it is, the it eye. is. It was left from it's the Turks. Yeah. yeah, the Ottomans brought it. When we flew to Ankara, do you remember they had an evil eye hanging in the Turkish Airlines yes, in, yes. In, in, in the plane? And when we saw one, you said, we have to buy it. So we have this really, really nice evil eye. Do you actually believe that it warns off spirits? Yeah, I think it does. It catches them in that black hole over the evil eye. Really? And keeps them there, yes. Same like if you dream catcher, Indians, native Indians. Yes, yes. They have dream catchers, you should uh, put it on your window and it catches all the bad dreams. And also, you know, because I come from the mixed background, uh, we used to have this, that you should have a Quran in your house. It brings luck, good luck. But we don't have a Quran. Or in the car. We don't have a Quran in the house. Yes, I do. I have a small Quran in the house. <gasps> you have that, like this like really tiny one. thing that yes. fits into your purse. Or if you, you, you know, if you're a new driver and you, you, you get your new car, you, you should put a Quran in your car and keep it there for good luck. That's just because uh, my grandfather, he was a Muslim, so that was that. But and yeah, then it, must, also, it, it must and have meant... also one lady, uh, she, she taught me English, but she was speaking a perfect Arabic. She knew Jewish, she was like a multi-language, like bilingual. Uh, and she also wrote me in Arabic a uh, saying from the Quran on a piece of paper, and she folded, and I used to keep it in my purse. Keep it with me everywhere I go for good luck. Do you still carry a little micro Quran with you? Even it's in today? the house. No, I don't carry it. But you have it with you anyway? Yes. I you didn't know that, did you? Not. Yeah, I did actually, but I keep forgetting. I don't know. Does the same thing apply with the Bible? 
That I wouldn't I know. I never heard that. That I wouldn't know. I, I really wouldn't know. One more superstition that I find particularly charming is the belief around itchy palms. In Bosnia, if your right palm itches, it's a sign that you're going to receive money. I think it was just before we went to Rab, you said, we're going to get some money. And I went, what? And you said, I've got itchy palms. Oh, yeah. Left palm is usually for the money. Only the left. I think it's, yeah, I think, yeah, left palm is for the money and the right when you're going to give money. If you have a niche in the right palm, that means you're going to lose money. But the left palm brings money in. Of course, you'll find people who shrug these things off as old wives' tales. But even they, when pressed, might admit to still having a flicker of belief, even if it's just for fun. I actually think I'm one of those. It's light-hearted, these little signs and signals from the universe, but there's a warmth to them too, a way of making the everyday just that little bit more magical. Bosnia's superstitions, like many of its traditions, are born from a deep connection to the land, the seasons and the rhythms of life. Whether it's taking a moment to sit before leaving home, placing a sharp object down before handing it over, or wearing a charm against the evil eye, these practices speak to a sense of balance, a desire to maintain harmony, both with the people around you and with the forces that shape our world. Some may call them superstitions, others might call them rituals, but in the end, they're an essential part of the fabric of Bosnian life. They remind us that even in the most ordinary moments, there's a layer of meaning just waiting to be discovered. That's all for this episode of the podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this glimpse into the superstitions of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, like, share. You know the drill. It really helps others discover the show. Until next time, I'm David. Tamara's just left the studio and we're both reminding you to pause before you step back out the door and maybe even let your right palm itch just a little. Thanks for listening to our podcast. If you would like to support us and the production of future episodes, then please consider maybe buying us a coffee. The link to do that is in the show notes for this podcast. Thanks again and see you next time.